Chapter Seven of A Divine Cordial. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. A Divine Cordial by Thomas Watson. Effectual Calling. The second qualification of the persons to whom this privilege in the text belongs is they are the called of god all things work for good to them who are called though this word called is placed in order after loving of god yet in nature it goes before it love is first named but not first wrought we must be called of god before we can love god calling is made romans eight thirty the middle link of the golden chain of salvation it is placed between predestination and glorification and if we have this middle link fast we are sure of the two other ends of the chain for the clear illustration of this there are six things observable one a distinction about calling there is a twofold call one there is an outward call which is nothing else but god's blessed tender of grace in the gospel he is parleying with sinners when he invites them to come in and accept of mercy of this our saviour speaks many are called but few are chosen matthew twenty sixteen this external call is insufficient to salvation yet sufficient to leave men without excuse two there is an inward call when god wonderfully overpowers the heart and draws the will to embrace christ this is as augustine speaks an effectual call god by the outward call blows a trumpet in the ear by the inward call he opens the heart as he did the heart of lydia acts sixteen fourteen the outward call may bring to men a profession of christ the inward call brings them to a possession of christ the outward call curbs a sinner the inward call changes him two our deplorable condition before we are called one we are in a state of vassalage before god calls a man he is at the devil's call if he say go he goes the deluded sinner is like a slave that digs in the mine hews in the quarry or tugs at the oar he is at the command of satan as the ass at the command of the driver two we are in a state of darkness you were sometimes darkness ephesians five eight darkness is very disconsolate a man in the dark is full of fear he trembles every step he takes darkness is dangerous he who is in the dark may go quickly out of the right way and fall into rivers and whirlpools so in the darkness of ignorance we may quickly fall into the whirlpool of hell three we are in a state of impotency when we are without strength romans five six no strength to resist a temptation or grapple with a corruption sin cut the lock where our strength lay judges sixteen twenty nay there is not only impotency but obstinacy ye do always resist the holy ghost acts seven fifty one besides indisposition to good there is opposition four we are in a state of pollution i saw thee polluted in thy blood ezekiel sixteen six the fancy coins earthly thoughts the heart is the devil's forge where the sparks of lust fly five we are in a state of damnation we are born under a curse the wrath of god abideth on us john three thirty six this is our condition before god is pleased by a merciful call to bring us near to himself and free us from that misery in which we were before engulfed three the means of our effectual call the ordinary means which the lord uses in calling us is not by raptures and revelations but is one by his word which is the rod of his strength psalms one hundred and five two the voice of the word is god's call to us therefore he is said to speak to us from heaven hebrews twelve twenty five that is in the ministry of the word 
when the word calls from sin it is as if we heard a voice from heaven two by his spirit this is the loud call the word is the instrumental cause of our conversion the spirit is the efficient the ministers of god are only the pipes and organs it is the spirit blowing in them that effectually changes the heart while peter spoke the holy ghost fell on all them that heard the word acts ten forty four it is not the farmer's industry in ploughing and sowing that will make the ground fruitful without the earlier and latter rain so it is not the seed of the word that will effectually convert unless the spirit put forth his sweet influence and drops as rain upon the heart therefore the aid of god's spirit is to be implored that he would put forth his powerful voice and awaken us out of the grave of unbelief if a man knock at a gate of brass it will not open but if he come with a key in his hand it will open so when god who has the key of david in his hand revelation three seven comes he opens the heart though it be ever so fast locked against him for the method god uses in calling of sinners the lord does not tie himself to a particular way or use the same order with all he comes sometimes in a still small voice such as have godly parents and have sat under the warm sunshine of religious education often do not know how or when they were called the lord did secretly and gradually instill grace into their hearts as the dew falls unnoticed in drops they know by heavenly effects that they are called but the time or manner they know not the hand moves on the clock but they do not perceive when it moves thus god deals with some others are more stubborn and naughty sinners and god comes to them in a rough wind he uses more wedges of the law to break their hearts he deeply humbles them and shows them they are damned without christ then having ploughed up the fallow ground of their hearts by humiliation he sows the seeds of consolation he presents christ and mercy to them and draws their wills not only to accept christ but passionately to desire and faithfully to rest upon him thus he wrought upon paul and called him from a persecutor to a preacher this call though is more visible than the other yet is not more real god's method in calling sinners may vary but the effect is still the same five the properties of this effectual calling one it is a sweet call god so calls us as he allures he does not force but draw the freedom of will is not taken away but the stubbornness of it is conquered thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power psalms one hundred and ten three after this call there are no more disputes the soul readily obeys god's call as when christ called zacchaeus he joyfully welcomed him into his heart and house two it is a holy call who hath called us with a holy calling second timothy one nine this call of god calls men out of their sins by it they are consecrated and set apart for god the vessels of the tabernacle were taken from common use and set apart to a holy use so they who are effectually called are separated from sin and consecrated to god's service the god whom we worship is holy the work we are employed in is holy the place we hope to arrive at is holy all this calls for holiness a christian's heart is to be the presence chamber of the blessed trinity and shall not holiness to the lord be written upon it believers are children of god the father members of god the son and temples of god the holy ghost and shall they not be holy holiness is the badge and livery of god's people the people of thy holiness isaiah sixty three eighteen as chastity distinguishes a virtuous woman from a harlot so holiness distinguishes the godly from the wicked it is a holy calling for god hath not called us unto uncleanness but unto holiness 
first thessalonians four seven let not any man say he is called of god that lives in sin has god called you to be a swearer or to be a drunkard nay let not the merely moral person say he is effectually called what is civility without sanctity it is but a dead carcass strewn with flowers the king's pitcher stamped upon brass will not go current for gold the merely moral man looks as if he had the king of heaven's image stamped upon him but he is no better than counterfeit metal which will not pass for current with god three it is an irresistible call when god calls a man by his grace he cannot but come you may resist the minister's call but you cannot resist the spirit's call the finger of the blessed spirit can write upon a heart of stone as once he wrote his laws upon tables of stone god's words are creating words when he said let there be light there was light and when he said let there be faith it shall be so when god called paul he answered to the call i was not disobedient to the heavenly vision acts twenty six nineteen god rides forth conquering in the chariot of his gospel he makes the blind eyes see and the stony heart bleed if god will call a man nothing shall lie in the way to hinder difficulty shall be untied the powers of hell shall disband who hath resisted his will romans nine nineteen god bends the iron sinew and cuts asunder the gates of brass psalms one hundred and seven sixteen when the lord touches a man's heart by his spirit all proud imaginations are brought down and the fort royal of the will leads to god i may allude to psalms one fourteen five what ails thee o thou sea that thou fleddest and thou jordan that thou wert driven back to the man that before was as a raging sea foaming forth wickedness now on a sudden flees back and trembles he falls down as the jailer what shall i do to be saved acts sixteen thirty what ails thee o sea what ails this man the lord has been effectually calling him he has been working a work of grace and his now stubborn heart is conquered by a sweet violence for it is a high calling i press toward the mark for it is the prize of the high calling of god philippians three fourteen it is a high calling because we are called to high exercises of religion to die to sin to be crucified to the world to live by faith to have fellowship with the father first john one three this is a high calling here is a work too high for men in a state of nature to perform it is a high calling because we are called to high privileges to justification and adoption to be made co-heirs with christ that he is effectually called is higher than the princes of the earth five it is a gracious call it is the fruit and product of free grace that god should call some and not others some taken and others left one called who is of a more rugged morose disposition another of a sharper intellect of a sweeter temper rejected here is free grace that the poor should be rich in faith heirs of the kingdom james two five and the nobles and the great ones of the world for the most part rejected not many noble are called first corinthians one twenty six this is free and rich grace even so father for it seemed good in thy sight matthew eleven twenty six that under the same sermon one should be effectually wrought upon another no more moved than a dead man with the sound of music that one should hear the spirit's voice in the word another not hear it that one should be softened and moistened with the influence of heaven another like gideon's dry fleece has no dew upon him behold here distinguishing grace the same affliction converts one and hardens another affliction to one is as the bruising of spices which casts forth a fragrant smell to the other it is the crushing of weeds in a mortar which are more unsavoury what is the cause of this 
but the free grace of god it is a gracious calling it is all enameled and interwoven with free grace six it is a glorious call who hath called us unto eternal glory first peter five ten we are called to the enjoyment of the ever-blessed god as if a man were called out of a prison to sit upon a throne quintus curius writes of one who while digging in his garden was called to be a king thus god calls us to glory and virtue second peter one three first to virtue then to glory at athens there were two temples the temple of virtue and the temple of honour and no man could go to the temple of honour but through the temple of virtue so god calls us first to virtue and then to glory what is the glory among men which most so hunt after but a feather blown in the air what is it to the weight of glory is there not great reason we should follow god's call he calls to preferment can there be any loss or prejudice in this god would have us part with nothing for him but that which will damn us if we keep it he has no design upon us but to make us happy he calls us to salvation he calls us to a kingdom oh how should we then with bartimaeus throw off our ragged coat of sin and follow christ when he calls seven it is a rare call but few are savingly called few are chosen matthew twenty two fourteen few not collectively but comparatively the word to call signifies to choose out some from among the others many have the light brought to them but few have their eyes anointed to see that light thou hast a few names in sardis that have not defiled their garments revelation three four how many millions sit in the region of darkness and in those climates where the sun of righteousness does shine there are many who receive the light and truth without the love of it there are many formalists but a few believers there is some that looks like faith which is not the cyprian diamond says pliny sparkling like a true diamond but is not of the right kind it will break with the hammer so the hypocrite's faith will break with the hammer of persecution but few are truly called the number of precious stones are few to the number of pebble stones most men shape their religion according to the fashion of the times for they are for the music and idol daniel three seven the serious thought of this should make us work out our salvation with fear and labor to be in the number of those whom the lord has translated into a state of grace eight it is an unchangeable call the gifts and calling of god are without repentance romans eleven twenty nine that is as a learned writer says those gifts which flow from election when god calls a man he does not repent of it god does not as many friends do love one day and hate another or as princes who make their subjects favorites and afterwards throw them into prison this is the blessedness of a saint his condition admits no alteration god's call is founded upon his decree and his decree is immutable acts of grace cannot be reversed god blots out his people's sins but not their names let the world ring changes every hour a believer's condition is fused and unalterable six the end of our effectual calling is the honor of god that we should be to the praise of his glory ephesians one twelve he that is in the state of nature is no more fit to honor god than a brute is to put forth acts of reason a man before conversion continually reflects dishonor upon god as black vapors which arise out of fenny moorish grounds clouds and darkens the sun so out of the nature of man's heart arise black vapors of sin which cast a cloud upon god's glory the sinner is versed in treason but understands nothing of loyalty to the king of heaven but there are some of whom the lot of free grace falls upon 
and these shall be taken as jewels from among the rubbish and be effectually called that they may lift up god's name in the world the lord will have some in all ages who oppose the corruptions of the times bear witness to his truths and convert sinners from the error of their ways he will have his worthiness as king david had they who have been monuments of god's mercies will be trumpets of his praise these considerations show us the necessity of effectual calling without it there is no going to heaven we must be made meet for the inheritance colossians one twelve as god made heaven fit for us so he makes us fit for heaven and what gives this meetness but effectual calling a man remaining in the filth and rubbish of nature is no more fit for heaven than a dead man who is fit to inherit an estate the high calling is not a thing arbitrary or indifferent but as needful as salvation yet alas how is this one thing needful neglected most men like the people of israel wandered up and down to gather straw but do not mind the evidences of their effectual calling take notice what a mighty power god puts forth in calling of sinners god does so call as to draw john six forty four conversion is styled a resurrection blessed is he that part in the first resurrection revelation twenty six that is a rising from sin to grace a man can no more convert himself than a dead man can raise himself it is called a creation colossians three ten to create is above the power of nature objection but some say the will is not dead but asleep and god by a moral persuasion does only awaken us and then the will can obey god's call and more of itself to its own conversion answer to this i answer every man is by sin bound in fetters i perceive that thou art in the bond of iniquity acts eight twenty three a man that is in fetters if you use arguments and persuade him to go is that sufficient there must be a breaking of his fetters and setting him free before he can walk so it is with every natural man he is fettered with corruption now the lord by converting grace must file off his fetters nay give him legs to run to or he can never obtain salvation use an exhortation to make your calling sure give diligence to make your calling sure second peter one ten this is the great business of our lives to get sound evidences of our effectual calling do not acquiesce in outward privileges do not cry as the jews the temple of the lord jeremiah seven four do not rest in baptism what is it to have the water and want the spirit do not be content that christ has been preached to you do not satisfy yourselves with an empty profession all this may be and yet you are no better than blazing comments but labor to evidence your souls that you are called of god be not athenians to inquire news what is the state and complexion of the times what changes are likely to happen in such a year what is all this if you are not effectually called what if the times should have a fair aspect what though the glory did dwell in our land if grace does not dwell in our hearts o my brethren when things are dark without let them be clear within give diligence to make your calling sure it is both feasible and probable god is not wanting to them that seek him let not this great business hang in your hand any longer if it were a controversy about your land you would use all your means to clear your title and is salvation nothing will you not clear your title here consider how sad your case is if you are not effectually called you are strangers to god the prodigal went into a far country luke fifteen thirteen which implies that every sinner before conversion is far off from god 
that at a time you were without christ strangers to the covenants of promise ephesians two twelve men dying in their sins have no more right to promises than strangers have to the privilege of free-born citizens if you are strangers what language can you expect from god but this i know you not if you are not effectually called you are enemies alienated and enemies colossians one twenty one there is nothing in the bible you can lay claim to but the threatenings you are heirs to all the plagues written in the book of god though you may resist the commands of the law you cannot flee from the curses of the law such are enemies to god let them read their doom but those mine enemies which would not that i should reign over them bring hither and slay them before me luke nineteen twenty seven oh how it should concern you therefore to make your calling sure how miserable and damnable your condition will be if death call you before the spirit call you question but is there any hope of my being called i have been a great sinner answer great sinners have been called paul was a persecutor and yet he was called some of the jews who had a hand in crucifying christ were called god loves to display his free grace to sinners therefore be not discouraged you see a golden cord let down from heaven for your poor trembling souls to lay hold upon question but how shall i know i am effectually called answer he who is savingly called is called out of himself not only out of sinful self but out of righteous self he denies his duties and moral endowments not having my own righteousness philippians three nine he whose heart god has touched by his spirit lays down the idol of self-righteousness at christ's feet for him to tread upon he uses morality and duties of piety but does not trust to them noah's dove made use of her wings to fly but trusted to the ark for safety this is excellent when a man is called out of himself this self-renunciation is as augustine says the first step to saving faith he who is effectually called has a visible change wrought not a change of the faculties but of the qualities he is altered from what he was before his body is the same but not his mind he has another spirit paul was so changed after his conversion that people did not know him acts nine twenty one oh what a metamorphosis does grace make and such were some of you but ye are sanctified but ye are justified first corinthians six eleven grace changes the heart in effectual calling there is a threefold change wrought one there is a change wrought in the understanding before there was ignorance darkness was upon the face of the deep but now there is light now ye are light in the lord ephesians five eight the first work of god in the creation of the world was light so it is in the new creation he who is savingly called says with that man in the gospel whereas i was blind now i see john nine twenty five he sees such evil in sin and excellency in the ways of god as he has never saw before indeed this light which the blessed spirit brings may well be called a marvellous light that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you to his marvellous light first peter two nine it is a marvellous light in six respects one because it is strangely conveyed it does not come from celestial orbs where the planets are but from the sun of righteousness two it is marvellous in the effect this light does that which no other light can it makes a man perceive himself to be blind three it is a marvellous light because it is more penetrating other light may shine upon the face this light shines into the heart enlightens the conscience second corinthians four six 
for it is a marvellous light because it sets those who have it a marvelling they marvel at themselves how could they be contented to be so long without it they marvel that their eyes should be opened and not others they marvel that notwithstanding they hated and opposed this light yet it should be light in the firmament of their souls this is what the saints will stand wonderingly at to all eternity five it is a marvellous light because it is more vital than any others it not only enlightens but it quickens and makes alive those who were dead in trespasses and sins ephesians two one therefore it is called the light of life john eight twelve six it is a marvellous light because it is the beginning of everlasting light the light of grace is the morning star which ushers in the sunlight of glory now then reader can you say that this marvellous light of the spirit has dawned upon you when you were enveloped in ignorance and did neither know god nor yourself suddenly a light from heaven shined round about you this is one part of the blessed change which is wrought in the effectual calling two there is a change wrought in the will to will is present with me romans seven eighteen the will which before opposed christ now embraces him the will which has an iron sinew is now like melting wax it readily receives the stamp and impression of the holy ghost the will moves heavenward and carries all the orbs to the affections along with it the regenerate will answer to every call of god as the echo answers to the voice lord what wilt thou have me to do acts nine six the will now becomes a volunteer it enlists itself under the captain of salvation hebrews two ten oh what a happy change is wrought here before the will kept christ out now it keeps sin out three there is a change in the conduct he who is called of god walks directly contrary to what he did before he walked before envy and malice now he walks in love before he walked in pride now in humility the current is carried quite another way as in the heart there is a new birth so in the life a new addition thus we see what a mighty change is wrought in such as are called of god how far are they from this effectual calling who never had any change they are the same they were forty or fifty years ago as proud and carnal as ever they have seen many changes in their times but they have had no change in their heart let not men think to leap out of the harlot's lap the world into abraham's bosom either they must have a gracious change while they live or a curse changed when they die he who is called of god esteems this high calling as the highest blessing a king whom god has called by his grace esteems it more that he is called to be a saint than that he is called to be a king he values his high calling more than his high birth theodius thought it a greater honor to be a christian than to be an emperor a carnal person can no more value spiritual blessings than a baby can value a diamond necklace he prefers his worldly grandeur his ease plenty and titles of honor before conversion he had rather be called duke than saint a sign he is a stranger to effectual calling he who is enlightened by the spirit counts holiness his best heraldry and looks upon his effectual calling as his preferment when he has taken this degree he is a candidate for heaven he who is effectually called is called out of the world it is a heavenly calling hebrews three one he that is called of god minds the things of a heavenly aspect he is in the world but not of the world naturalists say of precious stones though they have their matter from the earth yet their sparkling lustre is from the influence of the heavens so it is with a godly man though his body be from the earth yet the sparkling of his affections is from heaven 
his heart is drawn into the upper region as high as christ he not only cast off every wicked work but every earthly weight he is not a worm but an eagle another sign of our effectual calling is diligence in our ordinary calling some boast of their high calling but they die idly at anchor religion does not seal warrants to idleness christians must not be slothful idleness is the devil's bath a slothful person becomes a prey to every temptation grace while it cures the heart does not make the hand lame he who is called of god as he works for heaven so he works in his trade End of chapter 7